Hi, this is Hunter from Timber Hill Tennis Club. Today I'm coming to you from the Timber Hill Tennis Club Pro Shop and we are going to talk about tennis balls. Uh, most people don't give a whole lot of thought to the type of balls they use, but there are some differences. Uh, what we carry here at the club are the Pro Pin Marathon Balls. Uh, it's, pro, it's Pin's premium top of the line ball. Uh, it's made with a, a higher quality and denser rubber. It's also made with a higher quality felt than your regular pin ball. Um, all the brands have their premium balls. This is Penn's premium ball. Um, when you come to the club, you notice that you're offered a choice as to what you can buy when you come in. You can buy the can with the blue lid, or you can buy the can with the gold lid. Uh, the can with the blue lid is the regular duty felt version of the Pro Pen Marathon Ball. The can with the gold lid is the extra duty felt version of the Pro Pen Marathon Ball. You know, the balls have the same weights, the same specs. Um, you know, the rubber and felt are the same. There are some subtle differences, though, that could make them optimum for different uses. We'll start off with the regular duty ball. If you look at the can of regular duty balls, you notice that down on the bottom it says ideal for soft courts. Now typically when you play on clay courts, you will use a regular duty ball. That does not mean that it's exclusively used for clay courts. It's a great ball for indoor court play because you don't have quite as abrasive of a surface as you do outdoors. And if you're not hitting the ball really hard and wearing the actual felt on the ball down before the ball goes dead, this ball can be a great way to go. Um, some players will prefer this ball during the winter time too. They feel like it plays a little bit lighter maybe than, uh, than an extra duty ball does when it's really cold in the buildings. Um, the big difference in these balls is the regular duty ball has a slightly lighter nap in the felt than the regular duty ball does. And this does a couple of things. One is it, is it uh, creates a ball that will wear on the felt a little faster than an extra duty ball. So if you're a big hitter, the regular duty ball might not be the way to go, although the lifespan of the felt really isn't that much different. Since the felt weave is a little bit looser than the extra duty felt, it's really good if you ever have uh, a danger of getting the ball wet. If you're playing outdoors where there are puddles, things like that, the regular duty ball can work really well because the strands in the felt are slightly shorter than what is in the extra duty felt ball. Uh, it's a little bit of a looser weave that way. And so when the ball gets wet and rotates in the air, the strands don't elongate quite as much. I think we've all had that experience where we played with a wet ball and after four or five rallies, it becomes a big fluff ball. It's because all the strands of felt are getting pulled by the droplets of water and as the ball rotates, they pull away from the ball. With the regular duty felt ball, that is minimized by quite a bit. Um, the other thing to think about, uh, we've had some members express their preference to play with this ball during the cold weather. Um, I don't know what it is, whether it's sort of the lightness of the felt or whatever, but it does seem to be a little bit more of a lively ball in cold weather. It's sort of my preference for a cold weather ball as well. Uh, moving to the extra duty felt ball, uh, you notice with the gold top, cans you see at the bottom it's ideal for hard courts again it's not necessarily bad to play with these on a clay court or on a wet court but like i said as the ball absorbs water and as the felt gets wet as the ball rotates in the air the longer strands of felt in that extra duty ball will pull out and you get a much fluffier fatter ball than what you would normally get. It also retains that water and stays a little heavier if it gets wet as well. So the extra duty ball Extra duty ball is a, is a good way to go if you're playing outdoors a lot, if you're a big hitter and wear the felt out really fast, or if you just sort of like that heavier ball. Sometimes it's a player's preference that they get that, that ball that has a little more oomph to it, and this is that ball. Um, you know, personally, what I prefer is the uh, regular duty ball in the wintertime extra duty ball in the summertime. Uh, I like them both. I think they hit very similarly, uh, but I do think that this is a little bit of a livelier bounce uh, during the summer, uh, during the winter rather, sorry. Um, you know, the last note about balls is you really do get what you pay for. I, I mentioned that within the Penn brand of balls, this is their premium ball. Uh, you look at a ball like the Penn ATP Tour ball, that's a similar ball as well, kind of more in their premium line. If you buy a regular can of Penn balls from Bimart or Costco or Big Five or wherever, um, that's typically not gonna last as long. The quality of the rubber isn't quite as high, the quality of the felt isn't quite as high, and who knows how long it's been sitting there. Um, so that's about it for balls. Uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to email me, hunter at timberhilltennis.com. I'd be happy to answer your tennis ball related 
questions. Um, one last thing, I promised you guys we would do some uh, book suggestions while everybody's following the stay at home orders with the coronavirus uh, pandemic going on. So today, I, you know, I thought about doing my favorite tennis book. I thought about doing, you know, what's considered uh, consensus, the best tennis book. Um, but I decided to go for kind of a wild card book today. It was a book that I read when I was a kid that was somewhat influential in terms of some of the things that I ended up teaching as I became a coach. Um, the book was Yvonne Lindell's Power Tennis by, you guessed it, Yvonne Lindell, and also by my old friend uh, who has now passed away, Gene Scott. Um, the book was interesting. Yvonne Lindell obviously was not an author. He was an athlete. Uh, the book was dictated to Gene Scott. It was meant to be an instructional type of book. Yvonne Lindell wasn't the greatest communicator, although Gene Scott was a fabulous writer. Uh, so some of the, the, the nuances that Lindell was trying to get across didn't always come across. But there were some really interesting things in that book in regards to, to not necessarily how to develop power, but how to use your power and how to uh, calculate when to, when to execute your power. Uh, so I think it was a cool book in terms of that. Um, I also love reading anything that was written by Gene Scott. Um, that's my, my tip for this week. I think you can still get those used on Amazon. Uh, so that book is still floating around somewhere. Uh, we'll do a book of the day, I guess, for every video that I do. So I promise I'll give you a more exciting and accessible and recent book next time we do it. But I thought I'd kick it off with that one. So I hope you guys are staying at home and, and following all the orders so we can get through this pandemic quickly. We're really excited about getting a chance to reopen the club, hopefully sooner than later. But in the meantime, everybody hang tight and we will continue the communications with you and hopefully we can learn something along the way.